Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are The Last Mile Profits. This is the last word on The Last Mile. Marek, there have been some developments in the world of in-garage delivery. Amazon has announced that it's expanding the availability of in-garage delivery via the Amazon app to another 4,000 cities. Now, I know that's probably going to be pleasing to you. Is it pleasing to you? You've got a smile oh, on your face. Ian, yeah. It is very pleasing because you probably remember that for the last two or three years, I've been shouting from the treetops that garages are a very good, safe alternative to direct in home delivery, and they make your garage this huge super locker. Well, it's a, it can be a large super locker, but of course, there's always capacity issues inside the garage. You might have your car in there, or it might be filled with junk. You never know. So it works for customers who have a, a MyQ Smart garage door. But I think this is a key thing that we need to understand here, Matt, because yeah, we've talked about the technology before and how it works and that it's all app-based. Like, but when the Amazon Prime customers gets to check out, this will be a new delivery option for them. Absolutely. I mean, I would imagine, Ian, um, in terms of the technology, I'd worry least because, you know, if this thing takes off as it seems it might do, it's going to be interfaceable probably with pretty much every alternative. But the, the key thing I would imagine is that in your preferences, this is permanently put in there as an alternative. Yeah, what so it, at checkout, you can just tick, say, deliver it to my garage. Well, in fact, you might even have this as a default option. I'm not, because it could be that if I'm not home, automatically becomes a garage delivery. So that could be one way it works. But but that's not the, the really sexy thing about this. What I find really sexy about this is suddenly big, heavy, ugly parcels are not a problem. And yeah, you're right. Assuming your garage is not full of junk and you have a bit of room, you know, it becomes quite incredible because your car tires, your washing machine suddenly become deliverable first time and then take it even further. If you have a fridge in your garage and you have a fresh delivery, suddenly your fresh, fresh delivery becomes problemless. And then take it even further. If the garage part works and someone doesn't have a garage but has a little bit of garden or a little bit of, of concrete in front of their house, you buy a B&Q shed for 150 bucks. Oh, put I was going to say, deliver it to, deliver it to the doghouse, deliver it to the kennel or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I, I want to get in. There's something else here, though, Matic, that we need to get into, and that is that this is an Amazon delivery option. But what does this mean for other retailers and other carriers? Because uh, you know, if, where Amazon goes, others will follow, right? Absolutely. And, and there's no reason why Google with their Google Home device shouldn't have something that will work with it. And if Amazon is smart, they're going to make their option agnostic because otherwise, if it's not, others will come into that space. So theoretically, the end game could be that you are able to create a sort of a mega pudo or, or locker in your garage shed or closed porch. You know, I can see hundreds of things developing. Imagine even a crowdsource model where someone has a big garage and it's standing empty. I was just about to say exactly that. Well, how how the, the next step could be that if you say, well, look, I've got this technology, five of my neighbors don't, but I'm gonna let my neighbors use it. And does that turn into something that people just do because they're nice neighbors? Could it be something that's monetized in the way that those other schemes that we've talked about before, you know, a, a monetized delivery to neighbor scheme? There are interesting ways that this could this could develop. So if Am we said before, it's Amazon, Amazon is now doing this in uh, 4,000 cities. They started with 50, they've gone now to 4,000. It's, it's quite amazing. Now there is, you mentioned fresh. I just want to mention that there's also a fresh element to this, that that they are expanding the in-garage gro grocery delivery. So in five cities, Amazon Prime members can have their grocery orders from Whole Foods Market or Amazon Fresh delivered securely into their garage. There's no mention of fridges sitting in the garage or anything like that. So clearly Am Amazon is making this play as part of its, you know, in-house, in-house, <laughs> yeah, in-garage delivery and it's guaranteed first-time delivery rate plus the groceries and the reasons why Amazon's going to grocery. So it's it's tying it all up nicely, isn't it? It's Ian, it's, it's incredible. It creates a lot more flexibility for home delivery. So effectively, the most important thing is 100% first-time delivery. 
you don't have to be home. And actually, smart locks offer many more ancillary services, because if you think about it, you don't want your kids to have a key because they've lost the key three, the key three times. So you allow your kids access with a smart lock. Taking it further, you use a smart lock because you, you're cleaner. You don't want him or her to have a key, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it, you yourself forget your key, and this is of course the version with with your front door, which not everybody would 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 maybe be open to to. But I think you know, Ian, the sky's the limit in terms of what that technology can offer. The final one, we're doing some work in Singapore recently, and they have a model where you have people who, as you mentioned earlier, help their neighbours by picking up parcels and delivering them. This crowdsource idea of, you know, uh, I have space, I just think it's incredible. So, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg. I muted myself. <laughs> it is indeed the, the, the tip of the iceberg. And we've got to also remember, though, that it's a bit like with parcel locks. It's not going to be for every parcel. You mentioned before that it opens up possibilities with regard to things like heavy deliveries, oversized deliveries. But if you're delivering something that requires a signature, there are times when the, 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 either the shipper or the customer, the end recipient, won't want it to be effectively what is a leave safe option. So if it might be alcohol in those countries where alcohol deliveries are permitted, there might still need to be a signature from somebody who's aged 18 and above. So little things like that. So it's not quite 100% coverage of every single parcel that's out there, but the potential is incredible, isn't it? I think, I think, Ian, yes, I think there are always workarounds. The alcohol one is a little bit tricky, but everything other than that, there's a workaround because theoretically the handshake or the confirmation comes through a scan probably of some kind. Plus, remember, you've got photographic evidence that, that the item was delivered, which is actually sometimes better than signature because I've seen many occasions where you have the signature and then when I was at Amazon, the consignee says, well, actually, I didn't get it. And, you know, how are you going to prove it? So, of course, the next generation of this matter will be people will be putting parcel lockers inside of their garages so they have the parcels delivered in there for their communities. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's just exaggerating a little bit, um, but at least we haven't mentioned D-R-O-N-E-S, have we, Maddox? No, we haven't mentioned your favourite subject. But, Ian, there's one, one thing I want to mention, though, because one of the other things, and quite often people say, OK, this is great if you have a private house. What if you're living in a block of flats? And then th this is where it gets quite cool, because in many blocks of flats, you either have a concierge room or a room that could easily be made into a concierge room, which suddenly becomes your big pudo. So although, of course, you've got the issue that you're going to have several people's parcels in that concierge room, if you've got a camera and the items perhaps are not really high value, it creates this mega pudo or access point for uh, any American viewers in your block of flats. So lots happening there. Comment below, everybody. Tell us what you think. Is in-garage delivery really going to take off? Amazon thinks so. It's gone from 50 to 4,000 cities in the USA alone. So where's in-garage delivery going to land? Marek Krzyzewski, thanks for being part of The Last Mile Profits today. Uh, thank you, Ian. I just mentioned one last thing. I can imagine this whole area of smart technology, Google and people like Google, you know, really taking a lot more important a role in the last mile. So that could be one for one of our next VCs. Indeed. Thanks for joining us today on The Last Mile Profits.